All right, how do we kick it off? Sean, how are you? Good, bro, how are you? Yeah, good. Um, so what I'm gonna do, uh, we have, obviously, Hiramasa Kingfish. Yeah, get that off. Um, and get that off. So I've got um, the old fillet that you kindly uh, fillet for me because, my, because I'm not a very good filler, as you are. Um, so what I, what I was thinking to do was, uh, I was thinking to do two dishes with probably a little bit of an Italian spin on both of them, just a couple of things here and there. Um, you know, as you know, kingfish, raw, cooked, tartare, sliced, whatever, it's great. Mm. Um, so I thought I'd do a cooked dish with a puttanesca sauce. Do you know what puttanesca is? Oh, I've learned that. Puttanesca is <laughs> prostitute sauce. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but um, it, it's quite simple. There is actually a similar sauce which is called Livornese. So tomatoes, olives, capers, you know, all these really salty, tasty uh, ingredients. And the tomatoes are good when they're fresh and you use um, fresh tomatoes rather than tinned for this dish. Uh, and that is with a cooked one, so I'll serve it just with the sauce. And I thought the crudo, just to keep it as simple as I possibly can. So what's, and what's using a crudo? Crudo means raw. Okay. So I'm going to get going, because it's going to take a little while for the sauce to cook and reduce. Uh, so just a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil in the pan. Um, and then what I've got is just some uh, simply chopped Spanish onions and a little bit of garlic, which I love to slice rather than chop up too much because otherwise all the oils would sit on the chopping board. Um, so just probably uh, you can put those in nearly together because the garlic is not so small, so it won't burn. This is like a dish at your restaurant? No, this is, this is a dish at home okay. with my family once a week with pasta, normally. But I thought, you know what, I think this will go away with the kingfish as well. So as soon as the onions get going, just a little bit of garlic, maybe just like four or five slices of a clove, and you just get that going. Um, possibly try to cook this, but it doesn't really color too much. Okay, so this is just a little bit of that, just turn it down. And then what I will put in there after about a minute I may just sprinkle a little bit of um, dry oregano, which goes really well with this kind of sauce. Yeah. And then <coughs> what I'll do then, I just let it cook gently there. What I'll do, I'll get some anchovies, maybe two anchovies, you know, good flavor and saltiness into the sauce and just slice them up like that. Just drop it in and then kind of cook it gently so it kind of nearly dissolves with it and then I normally get a little bit of the oil as well yeah, 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 and just yeah. put a little bit of that in there just for more you know more flavor so then I'm just going to put my tomatoes which I normally I chop them maybe you know four or five minutes before I use them so the excess water kind of drains a bit otherwise yeah, yeah, the yeah. sauce becomes it's too do you, wet do you salt them first no uh, no 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 just like that if you if you just let them sit in a colander or even just a bowl they'll release the natural water they sit there and then tip it off I guess in a colander. So all that pretty much cooking together. I'm just gonna, you know, let this cook for about. Keep an eye on that for you. No, that, that, that's all good. I'm just gonna turn it down. In the meantime, what we can do is maybe I can I can do the crudo, and this one will cook for a bit now and reduce more more of the water. Now all the other things at the end, um, you you add them at the end. One of the reasons why you do that is couple of reasons, the seasoning, so I didn't put any salt yet, yep. because capers are salty, olives are salty, and chovies are salty, three things. So I'll taste it and then I like those at the end. And then the other reason is if you put black olives into a sauce now like this and it cooks for 30, 40 minutes, the sauce will turn black, which okay. you don't want to do that. You want to keep it reddish. Yeah, rather. Cool. Like I said, the top part of the fillet for cooking and then the belly bottom part so, for crudo, which is, is it, do you, yeah, 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 the more right. oilier, the nicer, more mouthful, mm -hmm. more flavor. More flavor. Mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, so we got a plate. Now this one here, it's going to be the quickest dish in Australia, I reckon. And anyone can do it very, very easily. It's coming really good, it's starting to thicken up a bit. So, there you go, look at this. Skinned, okay, so I'm just gonna put this one on the side here. Um, any better? You keep the bloodline on? 
up. Yes, yeah, flavor. Tons of flavor, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So just literally thin slices. Like this. Just like upside down sashimi. Yeah. And what I'm going to do then, maybe you can help me out a little bit. I'm going to make a simple sauce. Um, and I'm going to use Campari because Campari, it's another one of those things that you never have missing from your pantry for Negronis. So that's what we're going to use. Um, so I'm just going to... Gonna... play for you? So, yeah, you can, you can play that. Yeah. Yeah, then we're... And then, uh, ah, yeah, the maestro, yeah. see? The maestro. How do you want a nice line? Just line it up. Yeah, just line cool. it up, as if you and I are eating. Um, so what I'll do now, the dressing, it's very simple. I have about 30 mils of Campari. So I'm just going to go 30 and a bit more. So this would nice. be a, enough dressing for that and probably a little bit of leftover, which is... Um, I try to just put it in a little jar and just keep it in the fridge. 30 ml of vinegar, Chardonnay vinegar or white vinegar. This is starting to really nicely thicken up, which is great. Very, very happy about that. So there's 15. So you there's can, you 30. Equal parts acid Yeah, Campari. so equal, par equal parts of vinegar and uh, Campari. And then uh, 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 Zest of an orange, which is, you know, like three oranges in this one. So I probably um, do a half of that because it's quite a lot, just like that. And then if it was a small, regular orange, you probably put the juice of one orange. But here, in this case, I'm just going to use probably a half of it's it. It's a monster orange. Yeah, it's a monster orange. It's beautiful. Yeah, just like that. And then in it goes. Then I have... Do you want your radishes from the fridge? Um, I probably use, I may, I may just slice one of those, like a firm one of those. So, just go like that. So try to do about equal parts of this with the vinegar and the Campari. Then I may just put a little bit of salt. Yep, to balance everything out. Just to balance everything out. I want to just put about 100 mils of extra virgin olive oil and then just like I okay. emulsify it. I'll avoid really putting pepper. Um, yeah, okay. Just very gently. Yep. Because... The um, radishes are peppery enough, so no, no more pepper, yeah. And the rocket in this case has got a little bit of pepper as well. Yeah. Today was a real eye opener for me. First, eh? first time down here in, um, um, in the Spencer Gulf and uh, Port Lincoln, and I, my mind now is like that. Yeah, that's I can just go back now to all my chefs and take all this back and then I translate this to my customers because, you know, the customers want to know what things come from and I'm so impressed and, I mean, the waters here are just like Sardinia, crystal clear. Oh, really? Yes. It's almost like, I, when, when I see water like this, I describe it always, you can drink it because it looks so clear and, you know, this fish is loving swimming around here and this is why you get such a fish like this. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, it's so just like spoon quite a bit of this dressing That's on top of it. That's a good plate for this as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to hold the sauce Perfect. nicely. Yeah. And Ooh, I always yeah. like to cover my kingfish with lots of dressing because it takes it, you know. Every slice has got quite a bit of the dressing, like that. And then um, I'm going to pick a nice firm radish. So then what I can do is I can just literally... Um, cut some thin slices of radish just for a little bit of uh, a little bit of peppery peppery crunch. crunch all those things that they balance your dish and color as well like color looks amazing always leave the skin on gives it a little bit more pepper I think a Japanese flag is it a red oh, and yeah. white yeah, yeah. Um, so just drop that on top like that Almost like you need one of these per slice of kingfish kind of thing. 
and then I'm just going to pour a little bit of baby rocket. Now, if you had maybe even like watercress, if you can find it, it goes really well with it. Just a couple of leaves of, no, no. just a little pinch of salt as well. I mean, there is a little bit in the dressing. Great, awesome salt, I love. Sean, why amazing. don't we have a little yeah, yeah, wash cheers, of, um, get the palate ready. Cheers. Cheers, Salute. good to see you. Thanks for cooking. This is where uh, Japan meets Italy, chopsticks with Campari. Oh, cool. Campari bit of, King bit of, bit of everything. Get it all in. Mm. You know, mm. it's the, nice. The kingfish, you know, the, I love the texture, like, you know, it's firm. It's almost like, I mean, I wouldn't say al dente, but it's almost like that. You know, it, it gives you a bit of a bite and, you know, it's not mushy. And I guess it's because, you know, what I learned is that, you know, this fish swims for what, like two years, you know, mm. building up muscle and, you know, the, the little bit of fat under the skin that it's almost like, you know, I, and, I, and I love saying this because it's comparable to the fat in the prosciutto, you know, it's the flavor um, that, that you need, you know, in fish like this. So, man, I love it. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful dish, it. man. Beautiful love dish. It. All right, so what I'll do is, um, maybe I put the fish on first. So and it's as simple as putting the pan on the stove and then drizzle some oil, okay? I may just use for this one a little bit of um, a canola oil or vegetable oil because what we don't want, Sean, is, is we don't want that extra virgin olive oil to burn at really high temperature. So I'm just gonna go an amount of that in the pan as you can see, I've got part of the uh, top yeah, nice. loin, which, uh, you know, looks amazing. I mean, look at that. That's stunning. You know? No skyling, no nothing, because the scales have become really, really crispy. A little bit of sea salt on the skin. A bit like you're salting crackling or something like that. And then in. And then it'll just come up to temperature and start curling a bit, I guess. In both restaurants and the uh, barretto that we have, I never ever not have kingfish on the menu. It's too good. It's like, you know, it's like a Negroni with no Campari. <laughs> so I'm gonna knock out a sashimi while you're doing that. Yeah, so that'll take about eight minutes, Sean. So Sean, about four minutes each side, bit of resting, and then, um, you know, we're pretty much ready. So I've, we have a bit of time up our sleeves, so what are you doing? I'm gonna smash out a really classic sashimi with wasabi and soy. Yep. So, Spencer Golf, here at Kingfish. Can't boys, wait. Boy, boys on the boat, pick this up when we're out there. Mm -hmm. We've got, I've broken it down into my three favorite bits. Yeah. We've got the toro, which is a super oh, yeah. fatty belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got the belly, which is connected to that, and then the loin. Yeah, um, nice. Three very different flavors in mm -hmm. these parts. Um, mm -hmm. Very oily, semi oily, not so oily. I mean, not it's so all oily. oily. You see it shining yeah, on my hands. Yeah, um, what I've got in my garnish is this is called Suma or Ken, and mm -hmm. I've chosen to do some sort of summery sort of colors. It looks amazing. They're very fatty, oily pieces. Yeah. I'm gonna score with the knife, and when I, oh. when I score it, it allows soy sauce to penetrate the flesh a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. And it looks super cool. Um, I like doing like a little zigzag pattern. Oh, cool. And then it can. I'd be like scoring calamari before you fry them. Exactly. Oh. So we'll do every little piece. Um, mm. And amazing. everything's got to be sort of bite sized, yeah? Yeah. Get yeah, up yeah. chopsticks, yeah, take yeah. the soy, and smash it out. And that's as simple as that, right? Simple as that. So that's belly pieces. Mm -hmm. we'll put them over here. Yeah. And then this is, this is the, the not so oily belly. Mm hmm. Um, I like to cut against the grain, so you've got that nice mouth feel, mm. so, you're, so you're crunching. Right. And I like to fold these ones up over each other, mm. so they cool. look, like, look like little waves. Beautiful. And then, four minutes on that. Depending on the thickness of the, uh, like I said, of the fish. From what we learned out on the water, Sean, what do you think, you know, that is given by, obviously, what, the, the way they look after the fish, um, the feeding? 
the environment, the water, all, all of that. I mean, it's the cold. cold, the cold water that they need to build up. The kind of yeah. I mean, if you're in the cold, you need to get fat to stay warm. Mm. So these fish are swimming around trying to stay warm, in perfect getting, conditions, getting fattier and fattier. Yeah, and it's just delicious. And we love that. And on the back line, I'm going to do a little nick into it so the soil can penetrate again. Ah. I have never seen this done this like this before. All right, and then to plate, I mean, that's basically my whole dish done. Yeah, nice Now one. I'm going to try to make it look pretty mm. with these different coloured... Yeah. This is called ken, or tsuma. Right. So it's really nice... It's really nice and to, tea. So yeah, to eat a little bit of vegetable with, with the fish. Yeah, yeah. We'll do sort of three, three mountains of each. Yeah. This is pumpkin. This one's cucumber. There you go. It's all very fresh. Mm -hmm. This one is radish. One of, the, one of the main things I always have with sashimi is this leaf here. It's called shiso or, oh, yeah. or oba. I've and, never um, seen shiso so big before because we get the, the I've seen the, 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 the micro shiso, but that. So years and years and years ago, before there was refrigeration, mm. you had to have this leaf with the fish right. to stop you getting sick. This has antibacterial properties in it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make a little flower out of this piece, just by rolling, rolling them up. Very cool. And that's literally like it's that mainly and some wine and... It's been with some sake, man, or white wine. Sake. Sake's lovely wine, with, yeah. with, with fish. Yeah. Mm. Make a little flower out of this one. Yeah. Put it in there. Very rustic flower. It's from Japan. These are like autumn, autumn leaves. That's something that I've never seen. A little, seen bit, of, little bit of colour. Are they, are they like maple leaves? Yeah, maple leaves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ginger with fish as well. Mm. Sometimes wasabi, sometimes ginger. Yeah. Let's put that there. there. Alrighty, Sean. So, fish is rested. Yep. So. I'll, I'll, <clears throat> with the puttanesca, because like I said before, it's not like, it's more of a salsa rather than a, you know, a pasta sauce. So, you know, the, the tomatoes are quite um, cooked well and, and reduced. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish it with the olives now. Uh, capers. So you've shredded those capers? Yeah, just shredded the capers. Yeah. Then I may just put a little drizzle of vinegar, like a touch, yeah, like, like that. Acid, yeah. yeah, a bit of acidity. We need a bit of sugar in there, okay. just like a couple of pinches of sugar. Last but not least, always, what do we do now, Sean? We taste, taste it, it, taste yeah. it, taste yeah. it. Yeah. Tasting, tasting, tasting. Oh, that's better than pizza sauce. That's <laughs> really good. I'm just gonna make a, a, little quenelle. a rough, a rough quenelle for it. Oh, that's mad. Just like a, you know, so you just put it on the side like that. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Look at that. Beautiful crispy the, skin. The bit of, you know, the, yeah, the crunchiness underneath and on top and, you know, all done in the pan. Crispy skin. Rest it well. And I'm just going to put it like that next to it. And then all I need to do now is get a little bit of basil. Okay. And you know what? You can actually use also a little bit of continental parsley, which is nothing wrong with it either. But basil, I think it's nice with tomato, you know, basil and tomato, they're like husband and wife. Oh. Just like, like that. Man, I'm definitely going to do this. I can, only, I can only do this with your knives well, because your knives are like the risers. Just a bit of that, like that. You know, that looks, I mean, I think it looks really Italian. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, a little pinch of salt, just around like that. Flakes look nice on the plate, and I always love to finish it off. Most of the time, with a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, which is called a crudo. And that's shown as simple as, as that. Kingfish a la puttanesca. Kingfish. Anyone can make this. I reckon a five-year-old kid can make this. Now you are Italian, yeah. okay? Because I was Japanese before. So the idea is that you just go a bit of that. Shred it off. And oh, then you get a little bit of that. And then you go like that. Right. Oh, nice. Right, right, Sean. Oh, that fish is delicious. Mm. Put on top of there. I need two hands. Mm. 
Mm. Far out. I think it's pretty good. Beautiful, unctuous, mm. meaty flavour from the fish. I don't think you. You look like you're putting a lot of salt on, but no, it takes it. It just, it just takes it. it takes and it if I had to judge this dish, I reckon I go 60 40. The fish is 60% and the sauce is 40%. Because the fish is really amazing. Thank you. Cheers, Sean. Yeah. Great. Safe travels home. Salute. So, Sean, that's done. What have you got? Um, I'm going to do another really simple um, sashimi dish. Kingfish, or Hiramasa Kingfish Jalapeno. It's a take on Nobu's classic dish, which mm, done all nice. over the world, but it's so simple. Um, you can either use the belly, which yep. is oily, or you can use the back. I prefer to use the back for this, yep. because it's got a little bit of texture. Yep. Um, these are really nice big loins. Mm. My plate's quite small, so yep. what I like to do as well is just trim that yep. in half to a sizable piece. Yep. And then that beautiful mm. red. The bloodline, man. You gotta leave that. You That's do, flavor, isn't it? That's gorgeous flavor. Yeah, that is gorgeous. And then flavor. round plate. Yeah, just like that. Uh, yeah, Super this sharp. is a, a Yanagi bar, sashimi knife. So, yeah. what I wanna do is start at the heel and end at the tip. Yeah. And basically, I'm polishing yeah. the fish as I come through, and then I finish my cut. You know, like beautiful, 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 oily, lovely pieces of Hiramas King fish. And then what I call invisible garlic. So I've grated some, just a clove of garlic oh, yeah. on the finger. Yeah. And just rubbing just a, bit of that. a little bit like you would on a bruschetta, I yes. guess. Yes, yes, very true. Um, then on, on each piece of fish, I'm gonna place a little yeah. slice of jalapeno, jalapeno chili. Um, crunchy. Crunchy and hot. I mean, hot. you think about sweet, sour, salty. Mm, all those, all those great, flavors. great flavors. My, my dressing is yuzu and soy, so mm. a nice citrusy, acidic. That's quite acidic, that yuzu okay. juice. Have a little taste. Mm. It's really, really nice. Bad. Yuzu and soy. dark soy sauce. Oh, yeah. So just mix them together. Mm. Have a little taste. Mm. That's really good. Mm. And then, a little trick. I wet my hands. And then I do a little... Get this coriander. Give me a liter. Okay. Coriander is really cool because it numbs the heat in the chili. Right. So when you eat this, take a little, few sprigs of coriander. Freshens it up. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So with wet fingers, I can create a little mountain. Oh yeah. That won't fall down in the middle. Like that. That's so cool. And then, get off my finger. And then I'm just going to dress. The kingfish with the yuzu soy. With a bit of that. Yeah. And you just, just put quite a bit of run it, because that's I love that. There you go, that's uh here must have kingfish jalapeno. Have a have a taste. Sean, have a taste. Okay, ever. Amazing. Amazing. I learned so much. And you know what? I'm older than you. One year. I know, I know. So and I'm I'm learning. I have a lot. to look up to you, you're my senpai. <laughs> oh yeah. You have a taste of that. Mm -hmm. so good. Okay, so. I think it's I think it's really cool that Clean Seas invited us down here. Yeah, to no, see it's amazing. the operation and see mm. exactly how I, they rear the fish, feed the fish, harvest the fish, put the fish on the table. I think the feedback we give them as chefs really changes the profile of, of the products. It's, a, it's like a tomato grower. Oh. They become better if you tell them about you know, the tomatoes are getting better. They're not as good, they're getting better. Now they're getting better if you do this and if you do that, they adjust and they, and they, and they um, you know, and they get better every time. And fish is the same thing. You know, it, it's like any other produce that we want to know where things come from and how they uh, be looked after, uh, if they're sustainable, and then, you know, it comes back to us, to our chefs, to our customers, and, you know, hopefully then people can learn more and more about all this. And these guys, I mean, are, Really, really mm, great. Nice. And what a team they've got. Sean, all the dishes are done. Should we invite these yeah. amazing guys that they look after this amazing farm and this amazing fish? So a little guys, a Benita, little, dai. A little thank you for taking us out on the boat yep, today. Yep. Come over and try some of this. We got forks here. Come in. Forks are here. Yes. Round the back of the front. Oh, we need this mouse. Back front, all over the shop. Wow.
I may have one more of this because two years, two years, years in preparation on the farm. Wow. To, your to, see, it, to see it finish like that is just perfect ending. But yeah, wonderful story. Nice. Job well done. Thanks, mate. Nice to meet you. I'll see you for pizza in Manly. <laughs>